The second of the three major steps in the central dogma is transcription. And as I have mentioned in my overview for the central dogma, transcription is where DNA is converted to RNA, okay? And in this case, we could say that transcription is DNA directed RNA synthesis because we, we want to create RNA, right? That's the goal, but our starting point or kind of uh, uh, thing that we will use as our basis is the DNA. So DNA directed RNA synthesis. Now that takes me back to something very significant in, 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 in microbiology because sometimes it's actually possible for some viruses to perform the opposite of what we usually know as transcription. So some viruses have the capability to use RNA information to create DNA. And since that's the opposite of what we usually uh, study, this is actually called reverse transcription. So maybe if you have heard of the enzyme reverse transcriptase, okay, that's uh, the process of converting RNA to DNA. However, since this is a special case, I will not be discussing reverse transcription, but the normal transcription uh, process in this recording. Now, before I start that, you have to recognize that in order for transcription to happen, we, we have actually several regions in the DNA strand, which we can imagine are clues, okay, or cues to guide how our RNA could be made from this DNA strand. So uh, we can kind of think of it as a pre-embedded or pre-made code, wherein uh, as long as we have the presence of the enzyme called RNA polymerase later, the RNA polymerase will be able to recognize these like embedded numbers or codes. Wherein if we could imagine, we have an arrangement of numbers, probably from the negative number line to the positive number line. So in this case, for example, I have negative 40, negative 35, negative 30, and then going all the way to negative one, and then positive one. And then actually, wherever the positive one is, that is like the origin of transcription. Remember, that's different from the origin of replication because we don't actually uh, think of trans, uh, replication uh, as using these codes before. But see, since here you now see the negative numbers, it's also important for you to know that we have certain regions okay, in the DNA which are called promoter regions. Simply put, promoter regions are areas of the DNA wherein once the RNA polymerase enzyme recognizes these promoter regions, that will guide the RNA polymerase to go upstream. When I say upstream, it means you are going to the positive number line uh, region of the DNA. That is to go to positive one, positive five, and forward, okay? And uh, of course, we have to go upstream because if you don't reach positive one, you will never start transcription. So the promoter regions kind of, you know, promote the process of transcription by guiding our enzyme to the positive number line where transcription is supposed to start. Significant uh, promoter regions or popular promoter regions include the negative 35 area that is only for prokaryotes the Hognes box, or sometimes called the TATA box, T-A-T-A box, uh, which is around negative 20 to negative 30 for eukaryotes. And then the Prypno box is around negative 10. And this is for prokaryotes. So <clears throat> of course, th these might, might be named after the people who discovered these sequences. And we could say that you know these sequences are constant or kind of quote unquote consensus among organisms, at least, for example, for all eukaryotes or most eukaryotes, the Hognes box is present, or for all prokaryotes, the Primno box is present, and the sequences here is constant also, okay? So now, what happens if I now, you know, imagine this, I have the RNA polymerase, 
going here and then going further upstream, 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 and then finally it hits positive one. Once RNA polymerase hits positive one, it will actually start the unwinding process. Just like helicase in replication, the RNA polymerase enzyme will open up and form some kind of bubble. Although this time we don't anymore call this a replication bubble, uh, nor do we call it a transcription bubble because actually um, it doesn't really resemble a bubble shape for most cases. I just use this uh, drawing. I recycle this from replication just for convenience. But the thing is, unlike replication, wherein both the blue and the red strands or both strands are being uh, used and are busy, only one of these two will be used for transcription. Let's say that the one I'm going to use is the blue one. I'm going to call the blue one as the template strand because this is our basis for the synthesis of the uh, RNA. And then the red one, wherein nothing happens at the bottom, we don't copy it, we don't make it into some kind of, uh, we don't use it to synthesize any strand, is called the informational or the sense strand. So the one wherein we synthesize our yellow mRNA strand here, okay, or future mRNA strand is the uh, blue one, which is the template or antisense. And uh, before we go there, let me just note that the RNA polymerase enzyme has two major components, the sigma subunit, which I will denote as the circular part here, and then the core, which is the square part right here. So the entire RNA polymerase is the one responsible for unzipping or unwinding or opening the two strands here. And uh, just like, okay, in, uh, 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 in replication, we could call this part as the initiation process. Now, of course, there should be an elongation process wherein we make our actual RNA strand, the one in color yellow. And that is actually done by the square one here, which actually means the core portion of the RNA polymerase. So notice, this is like a one-man show. It's the RNA polymerase, which reads the promoter regions. It's the same enzyme which opens up the DNA. And it's the same enzyme which makes the actual mRNA. So it's basically a one-man show. But do note that before elongation happens, there must be the removal of the circle thing right here, which means the sigma. So in other words, the RNA polymerase must first discard or get rid of the sigma. So if that is gone, that leaves behind the square core, which is the one later on responsible for making the actual mRNA or the RNA. And of course, in order to make RNA, you need nucleotides. So that means we, we should have nucleotide triphosphates right here, which again, we attach using phosphodiester bonds. All of that done by the core subunit of the RNA polymerase. And uh, of course, the same direction follows or is followed that elongation happens from five prime to three prime of the new strand. In this case, the RNA strand such that remember if the blue one is going from three prime to five prime left to right, then that means my yellow strand right here is anti-parallel to that five prime to three prime, which follows which follows the direction that is supposed to be followed. And again, all of this is happening above while the red one below is not really doing anything at all. So needless to say, transcription is easier to kind of absorb or study versus replication because we only use one strand instead of both of them. Now, we should also know that unlike replication, wherein, remember, in replication, if this is the entire DNA, it's made up of several thousand nucleotides or several million. In replication, we copy all of that. It's as if, you know, if, if we were talking about analogies here, in replication, you're making entire copies of a book cover to cover. So like, if this is like all 30 chapters of one book, the daughter strands are the entire 30 chapters also. But here in transcription, it's just like taking a photocopy of a few chapters. So maybe if this is around 30 chapters of a book, 
when you make an RNA, probably it's just like two, three, or four chapters, depending on how much is needed. Okay. And therefore, if if we are to copy just a portion, we have to terminate the elongation process at some point, right? Now, do know that there are two methods of terminating or stopping the process. Namely, the raw dependent and the raw independent methods. In the raw dependent process, which is the less frequent one, we need the help of a separate protein called the raw protein. I'm just going to designate it as this one. So this is the raw, this is the raw symbol, right? So this is the raw protein. Now, this one, raw dependent termination, requires a so-called termination sequence in our template strand. That is, for example, uh, again, remember this is the this is the positive one uh, part of the strand. So this is where we start our RNA synthesis, going left to right, and then going even further, 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 further. And then what if this is now uh, so far my progress? So this is where my uh, uh, the RNA polymerase is right now, and then it hits the termination sequence. Once our enzyme hits the termination sequence, we stop here and then we will recruit the raw protein, which in turn now goes in this direction. Once the raw protein hits the termination sequence, this raw protein will now try to remove the RNA polymerase from the process and then effectively allowing also the release of this entire RNA away from the blue strand. And in that case, it's as if you disassembled everything, all things to the raw protein that hit the termination sequence. So that is raw dependent termination. You, uh, the disassembly depended on the, pres on the presence of this thing. In the raw independent process, which is the more frequent way of uh, terminating transcription, you don't need a termination sequence. So notice there is no terminate, no red thing. Okay, there's no red thing right here. But what you do have is this one, which is kind of the substitute for the uh, termination sequence above. This one is actually just an inverted repeat. Okay, um, we're in. Okay, this one, the C C C C C. Okay, if you invert all of that or get its base pair, it's G, 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 right? Now, of course, since my yellow strand right here or my RNA is going to be base paired or patterned after that, so it means like, uh, of course, we follow the same base pairing. So C must pair to G, C must pair to G, and then we get G, 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 G. And then on the other side, we get C, 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 C. And uh, C, C here, um, this right here is like the same on this side, this is the same on the other. So that's why we call this an inverted repeat. Um, they, they kind of repeat on opposite sides. And then there's a random sequence at the middle. Also notice this, since we are now talking about transcription, the yellow strand is supposed to be RNA, right? Look at this. You may want to notice that our base pairs are now UA, okay, uh, right here. Meaning if I have A, from the DNA strand. Supposedly, in DNA, A is paired to T, right? Remember, there is no T in RNA. And, yet, and, and remember, the yellow strand is RNA. So on places where you're supposed to write T for RNA, you must be mindful that there is no more T in RNA. You replace that with U. So normally, if this was DNA, I'm supposed to write for AA, TP, but that's for DNA. Now, since we are making RNA, this is not transcription. It has to be UU. But for T, since uh, for T, I should put A and adenine is still present in RNA. We're still supposed to write A here. Uh, so be careful with that. Again, uh, remember, there's uracil in RNA and no thymine. Now, what happens if I have the inverted repeat? Think about this. Since G and C are base pairs, maybe it's possible that the closest ones to the random sequence in the middle would base pair. And then maybe these two would also base pair. And then these two would also base pair. 
and then so on and so forth. So what we notice here is that it's possible for these to kind of, can you imagine, they close themselves. Yeah? So you have like your two hands in front of you laid flat horizontally, and then you clap it. That's what happens, sorry, I skipped. That's what happens from this becoming this. Hmm, or maybe I could uh, try to draw it. So, for example, um, this thing right here is like if this is your left hand and this is your left hand and then it's flat, right? Then if you try to, you know, make them closer together so that you clap. Yeah, this is a terrible drawing. But the way that this becomes this is like your hands clapping. So, yeah. And uh, note that we actually call this a hairpin loop. So the inverted repeat will eventually give us a hairpin loop at the end. And the formation of that hairpin loop will actually by itself allow the uh, removal okay, of the DNA polym uh, RNA polymerase. And of course, we know that if this polymerase is kicked out from the equation, this RNA is also gonna be disassembled from its template strand, therefore terminating the process. So that is raw independent termination.